You're talking about into the report themselves? Yeah. But it's all the same exhibits. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. We would have separate conditions. And, uh, separate motions for time. Yeah. And you just have one site plan, one set right. of floor plans. Yeah. You no, know, you just have one case number. No, we have separate cases. You still have the case to keep separate. You're just about okay. the uh, report to the commission. Okay, just so you know, we're live. The, re the staff report to. Oh yeah, commission. yeah. Well, I try to, I try to simplify it just by having, having like tonight, having Steve just clump everything together. Yes, yes. So that's good. And, yeah. Um, just putting together the reports. We don't have um, Mike anymore to help. Uh, oh, I see. I, I would run it by legal, see if that that, that would hold up, in, you know, yeah. in, in case of a complaint or a, if they want to, you know, how do, how do you separate the dining from the diet drive through? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're so. live. Yeah, I understand. They're separate yeah. issues. Yeah, and they'd be discussed <laughs> right in the report. This is so. Yeah, I would, I would talk. I would talk about legal. See, see what they say. See what they have. Have the objection to that? Because I'm just looking at it from a legal standpoint. If anybody ch challenges it. So I don't know oh, I'm sorry. Are, I know we're muted on Zoom, but I'm not sure. Okay. What time is Oh, 7.30. 7.30. Okay. Um, Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Plan Commission. Uh, welcome to the to the March 18th meeting of the Skokie Plan Commission. Um, before we begin, I'd like to read something. Uh, <clears throat> Until further notice, meetings of the Skokie Plan Commission will be held electronically with the majority of the members participating via remote access in order to comply with the State of Illinois Gubernatorial Disaster Proclamation. Members of the public who wish to comment as to an item on the published agenda must submit their statement or question in writing to Steve Marciani at steve.marciani at skokie.org and all properly submitted statements or questions will be presented and read during the relevant portion of the meeting. Written comments may be submitted by email to citizen comments, that's one word, at skokie.org or by mail to, village of, to the Village of Skokie Attention Matt Brandmeyer, ex official plan commissioner, at 5127 Oakton Street, Skokie, Illinois, 60077, or via the Village Dropbox no later than noon the day of the meeting, located by the public entry to the to Village Hall. So without further ado, uh, I'm, I'm going to call the roll. Commissioner and you, Mitchell. And if you can uh, unmute yourself to yes, say so that you're here. So, yes. so we can say that you're here. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, I'm present. Thank you. Commissioner Quain. Here. Commissioner Lacani. I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Robinson. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin. Here. Commissioner Pierce Sullivan. Hi, I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Berman. Here. Commissioner Mate. Present. And I am here. So we have all members present. We do have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is to uh, ratified the meeting the minutes for the last meeting do I have a motion to approve so moved do I have a second second all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. any opposed None. meetings uh, the minutes have been approved okay tonight we have uh, where, where's my sheet we have five cases that are are related uh, we have cases 2021-01p 
Alley Vacation at 9965 Gross Point Road. 2020, case 2021-02P, subdivision case at 9965 Gross Point Road and 4101 Old Orchard Road. Case 2021-03P, site plan approval at, 60, at 9965 Gross Point Road and 4101 Old Orchard Road. Case 2021-04, Special use request at 4101 Old Orchard Road. And finally, 2021-05P, special use permit also at 4101 Old Orchard Road. All these cases have been requested by Rainbow, Ray, Rain Bent Properties, LLC. And I believe what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have the, have the cases presented to the plan commission in a package. So um, if the petitioner doesn't mind, I would like to ask him to gross over his five requests or their five requests. Before we begin, uh, is the petitioner here tonight? Yes. 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 Would you give us your name and your position, please? My name is uh, William Graham. I am the uh, sole member of Rainbow Bend Partners, uh, and I also am owner of Schaefer's Fine Wines and Spirits, LLC. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this electronically, but could you raise your right hand? I'm going to swear you in. And Nathan Anderson also. The and, yeah. and anybody, and anybody uh, uh, in your, in your, in your par party that will give testimony, please raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Do you affirm tonight that the testimony we give tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? I do. do. Gentlemen, thank you. And uh, we have our corporation counselor, counsel. Uh, is there notice and order, counsel? Counselor? Yes, there's notice is proper and correct. No, oh, thank you. Okay, sir, if you begin, can you give us an overview of, of your request on these five cases? Happily, and if I if I meld them all together, we can Nathan can help me break them out again. Um, and actually, okay, thank you. But, be, let me fun. give you um, just a brief background on the project of this project in total. If that's helpful to the to the commissioners, um, a narrative, and then I can go into each of the proposals. Um, uh, Schaefer's has been on this corner for 85 years in a variety of different iterations. Uh, I've been the owner for the past 12 years. Uh, Angie Schaefer uh, Cluxton, uh, who is a Skokie resident, uh, is next to me and she's third generation. She's off, off, <laughs> off screen right now. Her father back in the, uh, about 19, circa 1980, purchased 4101 Old Orchard Road, which is the subject of most of this conversation. Uh, it was a former plumbing supply business, uh, commercially zoned. We've used it um, since then for storage and for our annual warehouse sale. Uh, it's been a uh, underutilized uh, space and frankly underinvested in as far as um, uh, just capital improvements, if you will. Uh, we've had an idea for years uh, of different ways to utilize the space um, for the other 362 days of the year that we're not using it. And, um, and these ideas uh, come and gone, but frankly, uh, what's germinated is not necessarily from a position of strength for, from us, but from a position where we have a lot of competition, we have to rethink our model and being just a single uh, independent retail liquor store uh, is tough in this environment um, and has been for years. So the idea is to turn this space into uh, a, an event uh, space, not a restaurant, but frankly, a space you could rent uh, there would be a, a fresco area to it, and um, we would uh, provide the liquor not through a separate license, but from Shapers. So we would be uh, bringing it to the the host or hostess party, and then they would find a caterer uh, to serve uh, uh, to, to to prep to warm, uh, you know, uh, short prep in warming and plating, uh, but not a restaurant situation. Uh, parking has, I know, been an issue for the, uh, and I go back to concept and, and, and Nathan can comment on it. Parking, I know, has been a big issue for uh, the village and has in the past. As you can see, we have a, an ample number of spaces. This concept really utilizes, or the, 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 the idea is to be using it off hours from Shapers, 
So we have an empty lot <laughs> in the evenings and we have a lot of spaces that can be utilized. And, um, and as we can talk later on, the capacity would match um, the number of spots. Um, we would, you know, we have a brand and a reputation and we wanna maintain that. So all the concerns that we might talk about this evening, just as a, a sort of a universal statement, we uh, wanna do what we can do and do best by our neighbors, um, but also have a business in a commercially zoned uh, property with the, the, the uh, special uses that we're gonna talk about um, shortly. And um, I think, so if we wanna go into each of these different items uh, I, I guess the other one there, there are two items that i'm going to bundle together but to show um um our goodwill on this and our, and our hopeful hopeful with steve our willingness to uh think outside the box the village came to us after preliminary review and asked us for two of the requests tonight were, were essentially generated from the preliminary review which were a vacation of this alley uh, behind the store um thank you which is essentially part of our parking lot it's an alley in name only and the other request is because we have two subdivisions and 13 pin numbers uh, to consolidate them into a single pin uh, for everybody's uh, convenience and uh, and I appreciate that so we're willing to vacate this alley and find an appraisal and and um, pay out of pocket there's also the village is asked to take a piece of the existing alley and widening it to take it to code for four feet and so there would be a, a uh, a border or a, uh, I didn't want to say a horse trade because it's not, it's a, uh, the net difference between the two is what we'd pay um, uh, to purchase the property. Um, there would be a, a, a trade of, of a property or netting out, I guess would be the best, best way to say it. Um, so the special uses are for this outdoor space, uh, for having a, an event space, and then uh, the valley, uh, excuse me, the alley vacating, the, um, uh, the pin number consolidation and I, and then the site plan in general. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to Nathan because I'm now getting beyond my skis and he could fill in some details that I've missed. Nathan, could you, Bill, you uh, explained it pretty well. Uh, Excuse me. Could you give like many of you know, we Nathan? went in for our appearance commission last Nathan? week. We've Nathan? been approved Nathan? for the building Nathan? as a whole. Sir? Sir? We're humbly here in front of you talking about the site as a whole. Any issues you might... Nathan? Nathan, can you hear me? Would you give us your full name for the record? I can't hear him now. No, okay. yeah, no. Sorry, I got you. <laughs> uh, it's Nathan Anderson. I'm with OKW Architects. Thank you. No problem. Sorry about that. Uh, but like I was saying, we're here to talk about the site as a whole. We're upgrading the site per our preliminary plan review. We went through with Steve and the village last October. Uh, which includes upgrading the actual Schaefer's to the, let's call it Southwest area of the site to bring that up to modern zoning codes. Uh, with the vacation of the alley that allows us uh, better communication between all properties and allows us to stay out of village property. Uh, we believe we've uh, brought everything up to what's expected of us but we're definitely here to listen and answer okay thank you yeah. uh, the petitioners uh did you want to offer any other testimony if not i'll open up the uh open up the questions by the commissioners I, I think we're okay. I have a feeling as we answer questions, maybe we can flesh out some of the. Okay, that, that's my <laughs> thought. Sure. Uh, Commissioners, yeah. do you have any questions of the petitioner pertaining to this case, to, to these cases? They're all muted. Um, <clears throat> Paul? Yes. Yeah, could you elaborate further on um, what you imagine? this space being used for and elaborate further on the, the alfresco side of it as well? Sure. So uh, the space, it's going to be the same footprint, same building. As, as you can tell, we're not, we're not um, submitting any plans for uh, any type of large renovation. It's really taking the interior space, which is sort of a mid-American warehouse, pretty simple box, uh, and uh, putting amenities in um, to sort of I, you know, sometimes I've used warehouse chic. I don't even know if that's a term, but just 
uh, you know, uh, drop some lights as far as having um, uh, track lighting, same concrete floor. We'd still, we are still requesting to use this for our warehouse sales. So we can only go so much, so far in, in dressing it up because we have other purposes for it. Um, so it's going to be a very basic space. Um, it's going to, we're going to uh, rev it or improve the HVAC, so it'll be air conditioned. There'll be an additional uh, uh, on that top uh, elevation, an additional uh, garage door that will be uh, translucent. And those will open up um, when, when climate permits. Uh, and there'll be uh, an alfresco space outside, which should just be a patio area, um, which you can see in that dimension. It's about 2,000 square feet. Um, it'll be fenced um, towards the alley and landscape so that we're putting a buffer in as the village requested. Um, it'll be landscaped along the, um, the west boundary. In fact, there, you'll see there, right in that, in that triangle on that west edge, we're moving our trash receptacles to that location from uh, behind the Gross Point building, uh, the 9965, and that's frankly closer to, to neighbors. So that's going to be pushed off further into sort of a, um, a no man's land or into the parking lot, uh, but, but fenced in. So concept is, I, you know, um, Commissioner, to go back to sort of 30,000 feet, it's um, families, small groups under 100. Um, so it could be uh, anything from a bar mitzvah to a 50th birthday party. And uh, they'll rent the space from, from an LLC associated with Schaefer's. Uh, they'll uh, probably in the evenings uh, will abide by sound codes and all the rest. Uh, they'll, they'll identify a caterer who will come in and do the plating on, on, on site. We'll have a very modest plating uh, catering area. And then, as I mentioned in my presentation, they would uh, call Shapers in advance, uh, put in their, uh, their beverage order like anybody would do these days. Uh, they would purchase it from us. And then, uh, as opposed to delivering it by truck, we would dally it across the parking lot, or, <laughs> um, or they could bring it themselves um, to the site and uh, host the party under their own liability insurance which is probably worth mentioning um, in passing, but an important point. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Yep, Paul, I have a question. As looking at the landscaping, you know, there seems to be a, a mature tree in the back between the two structures as part of the landscaping to incorporate that tree somehow. I saw that there's a permit to, to cut some trees down, so I wondered which ones are coming down. It's which? Yeah, yeah, which, um, it's probably the, the one on the, the by the lot, and it, I think it does have to come down because it's um, it's built into the concrete right now. Oh, we're doing some. Uh, there's an ice house. Is that? Yeah, I yeah. think it's by the ice house. Okay. It's the one that's kind of like budding up here. I think this tree does need to come out because it's pushing. It's in the concrete. Okay, it's literally rooted itself into the concrete. So any site work we have to do there um, to rehabilitate the parking lot, uh, we believe it's going to have to be removed. If, well, we have, if they can figure a way to say that we would. It's not our choice to remove it. Um, it's only if it's by necessity, um, Commissioner. OK, thank you. I had a couple questions. Um, yes. Is this room uh, divisible? Um, can you hold multiple events at the same time? No, that, that, it's not the intent. OK, and you said uh, 100 maximum. Uh, is that a banquet style seating or? It would be very, it would be very flexible. We'd have rounds that could be taken down, um, and so depending on this, it's a, just a very flexible space. But I imagine having ten-person, eight-person rounds that just fold up um, because we, we're going to use it for a variety of, of, of types of events and different, you know, uh, numbers of people. Um, I hope I answered your. So a maximum event can be how many people? It's going to depend on the on the, the traffic study, but I think we're. we're Honing in around 100 and 120, 120 is where we're going to max We've out. Never done anything over that. Yeah, and we are not very interested in doing anything over that anyway. Um, but we'll definitely follow the where the uh, traffic study uh, or that, that ratio takes us. Okay, and just one more question: uh, You said that the events would take place after hours after Schaefer's is shut down. For the most part, I um, we close at seven. we close yeah, we close at seven o'clock in the evening. And, and frankly, that, that uh, store traffic is really confined from six to seven to maybe five or six spots. Uh, in, in, and sort of in, in real life, the times that our store is busy are the times we really can't be supporting 
having events such as the holidays over there because we need that space for gift wrapping and things. So it's, it's really uh, seriously an off-peak type of situation. So it really said, um, I hate the word synergy, <laughs> but it said sort of synergize with our, our normal operation and free up those spaces. Um, but that lot is um, empty um, for the most part. Um, evenings, it is. Thank you. For, spe <clears throat> for special events, what specifically time will you use it? Up to 10 o'clock at night? It would be, I think, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Commissioner. That's uh, okay. Yeah. The, I believe to be outside, there's a 10 o'clock curfew or cutoff. Um, I believe inside we could go later, and I would think to have a respectable party. That's not a that's not a uh, fifth, you know, <laughs> teens. We're sending them all home. Um, it would be it'd have to be later, but we would thoroughly respect if we have a sound issue, um, we would be closing the appropriate doors. And, and this is an air, air conditioned space, so I think we can button it up um, when necessary. Uh, we'll know more as we get into this, frankly, just based on acoustics and such, um, but make best efforts yeah. by all means. Great, right. thank you. Yeah. Any other questions to the, uh, of the petitioner? Okay, let's move on to the uh, staff report. Uh, Steve Marciani. Thank you, Mr. Luke. Um, I respectfully request that all five staff reports for one, two, three, four, and five P be accepted into the record as presented. Great. Request uh, is granted. All right, I'll try to go through these quickly from, from our perspective. Um, the, the first two cases are together, um, kind of together. So one is removing that portion of the public alley. Um, we did amend the petitioner's original request um, for an alley vacation petition, you usually need people on both sides of the alley to agree. They are on both sides of the alley, and all except the very, very tip. Um, so initially, the, uh, that last little bit was not included. We did speak to the um, neighbors who are at 9925, and they do not have any interest, and they sent us written confirmation of that. So we amended the request to include the entire alley vacation. That also affects the... Um, the subdivision case, so the, the whole alley will become part of the new lot. Uh, other than that, they've, they've stated most of um, what was already included, um, that it already, it already functionally is um, being used as their driveway. Um, it'll still be open on both ends. I know we had gotten some uh, feedback from some of the neighbors. Um, thank you to everyone there uh, who, who had done that from both Evanston and from Skokie. Um, so it, it will just be like a regular parking lot. I guess if you wanna cut through someone's parking lot, you can. Uh, as long as they don't close it off at night, but there, there will still be the, the other alley accesses to the south um, and to the east. Um, along with that on the subdivision, um, there will be widening the alley. That includes on all the parts that are remaining on the north and northwest side, and then also that southern part. I'm sorry, our blue line looked kind of weird right there. Um, so that, that will be widening of the alley so that we can uh, in, in an attempt to provide adequate back out. Um, so those are the two, these are generally just very perfunctory. Um, we just have a fiduciary duty to make sure that it meets all the requirements. There wasn't a preliminary plat drawn up because it got changed. That has to be presented um, to us for approval, um, make sure that it meets all the codes. And then basically for a subdivision, if it meets the rules, it just goes to the village board and they approve it and that's it. So that's the easy. All right, three, four, and five. So the first case, um, is the site plan. So because they're going to be sharing parking, um, any uh, development that is more than one principal building has to be in a, a site plan approval. So this is the ordinance that will govern the, the land and the site. So this is traffic circulation and the, the parking layout and how the, uh, the, the location, the outdoor dining. So we did work um, with them very, very diligently to come up with the plan that we have right now. There's still a few more tweaks that have to be made. Um, this is a vast improvement of the, the first plan which we saw, which is pretty much what we saw above. Um, Carrie, can you scroll up to the top, which is to use everything the way it was. So this really utilizes a lot of the empty space um, and allows them to put their outdoor dining in the middle. And we actually increase the amount of parking spaces, um, which is good. So we're, we're very happy with the layout. If you can go back to the normal site plan. 
Um, just to point out some of the things that we still are requesting that need to be corrected. So one has to do with the, the driveway. So two-way driveways are supposed to be 24 feet. Um, the existing alley is 16, as you can see from when we went to the, the picture, people are driving over. Carrie, if you can go to the, um, the street view. Um, they have been driving over the corner there because it's a really tight and awkward corner. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so everyone's been driving over the edge. Um, we need to upgrade that to a 24 foot. That is a requirement of the engineering division um, to make it a full full width driveway. It actually does do that um, just uh, to the north of there. If you go back to the site plan, I'm sorry for flipping back and forth. <laughs> so they are at 24 feet, um, the space right up to that point right uh, into the, the neighbor's property so we just need to shift that driveway along and make it a full 24 foot driveway um, and that will give it the proper apron so that's the first thing um then there are some some other minor things they had indicated that they're going to be putting the four foot alley dedication in on the site plan but they actually forgot to move the line so we have to make the adjustment to those parking spaces um, so pull out parking spaces are supposed to be 24 feet um, there is some squishing that has to occur to get that extra four feet. Um, I am asking the plan, the plan commission to, if we can't get the full 24 feet, that we do at least what we do for a person's garage. So like that dotted line right there um, is, is somebody's garage off the alley. Garages have to be five feet off the alley. So five feet off of 16 feet would be 21 feet. So at least on those, we have to get a minimum of 21 feet if we can't get the full 24. And that would be uh, an additional um, item of relief. And I am asking that the commission grant um, our staff the ability to, to work that out with them. If not, it would be added as an additional item of relief. That would be in which, which case uh, would that fall? It would be on the site plan case, case Thank three. You. Case three. Um, there is a, so over it, so we've got some, some squishing around to do. There's a couple spaces that we can um, get the two foot overhang in there for, for landscaping, so you want to get that done. The only other item which is kind of more significant is in the very southern parking lot, uh, the southwest parking lot. Uh, the landscaping, we, they were making adjustments to the parking striping, um, but we didn't get the uh, landscaping in. The landscaping and screening was a big concern of the neighbors. Um, this is a non-conforming parking lot right now where they go right up to the to the property line. There is space with all those little striped squares in between the parking spaces without losing any parking dimension to kind of shift that over and then put the, the landscaping screening on the Kedvale side. So we're requesting that that also be made um, with, the, with the revision prior to the hearing of the Board of Trustees. Other than that, I got most of the stuff here. Um, these are all in the condition number one of this particular case. Um, oh, then at the very, very corner of the, the intersection of the two streets where there's a space that, that says number one on it. Um, I'm sorry, Carrie, that, that old orchard and oh, Rose Point. Yeah, that one. Uh, the one that's space number one is a little awkwardly angled <laughs> and it doesn't actually meet the requirements. So we want that shifted over and then put the, the proper landscaping at the corner which would be right there. So that would also become green. That's basically the highlights of that. Um, there, there was one other comment about uh, one of the trees behind. I don't think it's actually there. There's a lilac that's listed. <laughs> um, it was something that the forester pointed out. And then basically everything needs to be updated to make these changes. Okay, on the special use permit. So we decided the use was gonna be barn drinking place for a couple of reasons. One, it accommodated all of their uses that they wanted to have on the site. Um, it also had the most restrictive parking requirements. So a lot of the neighbors had some concerns about parking. Um, they've got 85 shown. I know they initially thought they had 84. They actually have 85. So congratulations, you had a, a ghost space. Um, we do need to make some adjustments uh, to the site plan. So we might lose one or two. The good news is, is that we did their um, parking analysis on the very conservative side because we didn't have a floor plan for Schaefer's. So there will be some additional deductions. Um, I'm confident that we will be able to meet their um, parking requirement because there was so much concern from the neighbors. 
one of our conditions is that they will need to meet whatever the parking requirement that is, um, which is why I would like some flexibility in that back out space on the alley spaces to in case we can't quite get there. But um, we are not recommending any relief on the parking. We want to make sure that all the parking is there for the use. Um, there was also a, a pretty good analysis done by Mr. Doha um, on noise. Um, noise was a lot. So that's in Appendix A, what our noise requirements are. Um, so you, you can review those things. Those are already in the village code. There's, we're just reiterating in the, in the conditions that that, that occur. Um, just for the record, um, for the for the reports that all of the trash and garbage requirements are included as standard conditions, and most of the other conditions are standard conditions. The last part is for the outdoor dining. Um, Carrie, can you go to the landscaping plan? And it'll probably show this the best. So when we were working with them um, to come up with a good, lo a best location and to maximize parking, we came up with this location on the landscaping plan. If you can go a little Sorry. bit. I'm, I'm getting myself lost here. Just hold on. It's okay. You need to go down a little bit. Keep going. Is that it? Yeah, just zoom in. There we go. Thanks. So they've got a pretty big uh, amount of landscaping screening as well as a six foot uh, board on board fence or a wood fence um, for sound. We've also moved the um, outdoor dining area away from the residences from where it was initially proposed to the side of the building. Um, and again, the, the same uh, requirements would be there for uh, for noise for outdoors, just like every other outdoor dining has those noise restrictions and then limits on time. Um, there were some other suggestions that came um, from the public before they were able to see the plan. So the entrance is moving to the side of the building. Um, is that still intended to be the main entrance? Bill? This one right here? Yes. Yes. Because now I am seeing that there's a door that's still on the floor plan, but I don't think it's shown on the elevation. All of them are shown. That's a existing man door, the one that the hand uh, right below the new main entrance. Then we added a second door for egress purposes and to help get out to the site, if not going through the garage doors. And on the north, what is the door on the north side? The north is the existing door. Uh, we are just replacing that storefront to bring the aesthetics up. Okay, so th but most people will be entering from the side, correct? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Correct. Um, and then the, the yeah the, the landscape is going to be very significantly upgraded through this. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. There's a lot in these reports. <laughs> If too much in detail because I know there's probably a lot of questions that people have. So I am open for questions. Steve, for the patio area, will we uh, have some sort of curbing up so that you would not be able to park on that? Uh, Carrie, can you go to the site plan real quick? So the, the rear spaces are definitely, there's going to be a, the curb and the, the two foot overhang. Um, we don't want that size of that landscape area to be reduced. If, the, if anything's going to squish, the size of the patio is going to shrink a little bit, um, but not too much. So if we have to push that another foot northward to get those parking spaces at 21 feet, um, it's 16 feet with a two foot overhang. And then they've got the planters there. So the planters should be two, at least two feet off of the, of the curb. That is supposed to be a curb, right, Nathan? We're not in construction documents yet, but I'm pretty sure that the south line of that parking bay. No, that's uh, where the hand is currently is not a curb. That has to be functional to help with their uh, wine sale to be able to take in and out of wine through that area. Those planters will be movable. Oh, so, so this is a flexible space. Stuff. Okay, great. So the yeah, we can, back. We, we can provide movable wheel stops if needed. Actually, when, um, if the planters are two feet back, that's the 16 with the two foot overhang. So the planters will act as the, as the wheel stop. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Steve, is parking allowed on Karlov? Is that where Karlov or immediately east of the building? Um, so there's a, a general uh, restriction that all employees have to park on site. Um, in these circumstances, I'm assuming the employees are going to park south in the south lot, um, south of, of the Schaefer's building itself as opposed to this space um 
you know, it's a, it is a public street, but we are increasing the capacity to be able to, and the door is located on the side of the parking lot. It's just like every other business district. Um, the parking is not restricted. I don't, I don't think on that on that first on those on that street because the residents have to park there. Okay. Okay. Any other questions of staff? No. Good. Um, at this point, are, are there any uh, citizens' comments? Yes, I've received two emails during the meeting. Could you um, read those into the record? Yes. Um, it's a total of seven questions. Um, a concerned resident on Karloff writes, um, her question, one, question one is, um, it's under permits for food and bar, and but you state that it will not be a bar. So what is the real intention of this space? Um, when talking about the alley closure, um, if permanent, have you talked to, to the neighbor about this because he has a garage located in that alley? Um, if it's gonna be an event space, what is the capacity of the establishment? Um, also, if it is an event space, how can we know that there will not be strangers roaming our street on Karloff, intoxicated after the event. Um, how can we ensure that there will not be an increase of rats due to garbage from said events? And then um, we have fears that it will dis depreciate our home values if there is a rambunctious space on the corner. And then the next email that I received from another resident, um, wanted to state that there is a resident living 100 feet from the patio. What are the plans for the hours of operation? Those are the comments. Okay. Would you enter those comments into the, into the record? Yes, yes, I'd like to enter these into the record. Okay. Uh, we do have a citizen in the audience. Uh, do you have any a question or comment on these five cases? Could you come up to the, can she use your microphone? Yes, sure. As you come up, would you give us your name and your address, please? Are you here? Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Lena Ishu, and I'm the homeowner at 9943 Karlov Avenue, which is the house on the north east corner of the alley right across the street from the um, warehouse space as it exists right now. Um, I have a few concerns. Um, uh, as of presently, we are in an area where we already have a liquor store in our alley, Tony's, and we were already, uh, we already experienced lots of, you know, bottles of alcohol in the alley and people walking around that have been drinking after hours. So my concern as a parent um, is also a concern that was addressed by a resident. Um, how can we protect our streets uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, or whatever the hours of operation are gonna be when people are attending an event and they're drinking? And um, what happens to our block when the overcrowding of people start parking on Karlov um, and um, our property and our vehicles and our homes in general? Um, I also have a question about the alley being vacated um, as well. I think that's probably a neighbor of mine and her and I had this conversation, so she probably sent those over to you. Um, there is a neighbor that is 100 feet from the patio space. Um, my question is, how many people will the patio hold? What's the capacity of the patio? Um, do you just plan on using it in the spring and summer and the fall when it's actually nice enough to sit outside? How can you control noise level when you have 100 people eating or drinking outside? Um, what happens in that case when we call to complain? You know, do we call Skokie police and they come and shut down the party and everybody has to evacuate the space? That doesn't really make any sense, right? When you sign a contract to rent an event space. Um, also, the corner there is a pretty quiet and dead corner. Past 7 p.m. when it's dark outside, there's traffic. 
at all whatsoever. So who's to say that someone doesn't come to this event, you know, have too much to drink and end up doing something outside and it's already a pretty quiet area. No one can get there on time or um, really help the citizens that are paying, you know, the property taxes to live in this area and raise their families. Um, those are just a few of my concerns. I didn't write anything down. I'm sure I probably have a hundred more concerns, but I, I came in tonight personally because I was super concerned as well. And I do also believe that, you know, our property values will be depreciated because of the space that's like that that's like this. And who wants to live, you know, a house or two houses away from an area or a bar that, you know, is loud and, you know, people come to get intoxicated in the middle of a neighborhood. So Oh, those let are me, just a few. Let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. you're, you're not too, if you're not that far from Schaefer's, then you're not too far from, um, from uh, Zivago's, Zivago's, is that correct? Zivago's, yeah. Right. Do you have any problems with them? No, but Zivago's space is on Gross Point. It's not in the middle of a neighborhood. So I don't have a problem with Schaefer's as it exists because it's on Gross Point. But their new uh, facility will actually be on Karloff, which is on the side street. It's not on a main street. Their plans were to move their their um, retail space to Karlov where it's nice and quiet and people just come in and get their stuff and go and their party space on the main street that would make more sense. It's further away from the residents. But the way that it's planned out now, their new space is in the middle of where the residents live. It's in the quieter space. Um, and so I think that's also a reason, you know, that's another aspect of you know, just the way that they've kind of drawn everything out. I had I had no idea what the plans look like until I saw them this evening. And so um, the fact that they are gonna be on Karlov and it's a residential neighborhood, it really, it, it concerns me. As a parent, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, as a homeowner. Okay. Uh Thanks for listening. You're welcome. Thank I you for coming. It. Thanks for uh, if you, too. Would you like copies of the report? Sure, please. If I can okay, before right. you leave, we'll see yeah. us and we'll give you copies. Um, Petitioner, do you have any of the comments or questions? And, and do you have anything to add? To, and if you listen to the citizens' comments, uh, do you have any comments on those? you're on mute if you're trying to talk oh, I wasn't sure it was being directed to um, there are oh, several comments one of which just top of mind um, this is a uh, I think by code we're only allowed to have the outdoor space between April and October if I recall um, that was just a, um, a passing comment um, we are not we are purposefully not there is a um, potential to use Karlov as there's a door there and frankly a, a, a garage door. Those would be dormant. Uh, we would not be doing any any entrance or egress on Karlov. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, it's, there's a whole commercial strip on Old Orchard Road. Um, and as you mentioned, there's Tony's um, and I, I can't vouch for, they're open until 10 o'clock. We, we purposely close at seven o'clock because we're trying to um, be good neighbors and, and don't have the business then. Um, so I, I'm trying to say that we're making best efforts to be um, good property um, property owners, um, and we believe we can do this concept in a in a uh, we're gonna upgrade the whole um, uh, that specific area and try to do it right. Um, I, if there are specific things that the commissioners caught in this, I'd, I'd be happy. There were sort of a, there, were, there was a lot to absorb, so I'm not sure. If something resonates and you want to ask an additional question, maybe that, or Nathan, if there's something you caught that I, I missed. I've got a question. No, I think, I'm quite, sorry. Well, oh, that's okay, go ahead, Nathan. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, I agree with Bill. I think most of the concerns are concerns. We've also tried to note as many of them as possible by bringing the, the event space as far off the alley as we can while still parking the space efficiently to try to keep as many cars as possible into the actual space and off the alleys. We only have 
I think it's five spaces off that alley, and that's really will be for overflow parking. As you know, most people will park as close to the building as possible or within the lot. They'll try to stay out of the alleys. With these with these garage doors, and this goes to the question about capacity, and and maybe we need to reinforce it because I'm not quite sure when people come on and and, and such. Um, it's somewhere around 100 and 120 where I think Steve, I believe this is going to net out with our spaces. So we're going to have um, the the actual parking capacity on our lots as opposed to people going off um, on the side streets. And this is different than the warehouse sale, and I know which happens two days a year and affects. The, the parking and the mentality because it's a much different event um, than this and so we can handle it on site on this on this um, on this eight, you know uh, 50,000 square feet if you will um, and uh, I, I lost my train of thought on on parking um, it'll come back to me I'm sorry oh the, this the capacity and so I, these hundred people I, I not all going to be on this deck at the same time like this. It's two, it's two thousand square feet. It's not a huge huge area. So that's why they're the garage doors, so that there's a a flow and it's a larger setting. Um, uh, just to give a context for the sort of the proportionality of it, if you will. So okay. can I ask a question? I'm sorry, Steve. You want to go uh, before I just me? Just wanted to to reinforce a, a couple things. So one, as far as far as the capacity, the capacity is going to be set by the fire department. <laughs> so we haven't done that analysis yet. So I don't know that it's going to be 120 or if it's going to be 100. It's just going to depend on whatever it is. So I, I don't want everyone to get focused on that. I mean, it, it could, but I don't know that it's going to be that much. Um, also, we did when we went through the preliminary plan review and, and we did try to push as much of the activity westward. So you've got the bulk of the building that would be blocking the sound. I mean, it is a brick building. Um, they're going to be putting new windows in it. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's going to help with the sound. Um, they've indicated they're not going to be using the garage door. I mean, I didn't actually put that restriction in there, but if we could add a condition that that stays down during events, I don't think I put that in there. Um, <laughs> maybe I did. Uh, there was a condition. There was a condition. Okay. So the doors have to stay down during events. So the, the doors car lob doors have to stay shut. Um, so, so for the, for those aspects and we are, we did park it for the most intensive use <laughs> that we have, which is one for 100. So that's like what a, what a full service restaurant would be. Um, and, and we have got plenty of parking spaces, this little space or this space is going to be, there's all the parking spaces for Schaefer's plus all the parking spaces for this space. So, um, that, that's a lot of parking spaces. It's, it, even if we do have 100, that's like as almost if every single person comes in their own car and you have a big event. And I was about to, and Steve, I, that was my train of thought was, you know, frankly, in this day and age with, with Uber and the rest, we even sort of question the, the ratio um, as far as parking needs to clientele because people do use Uber and, and ride share and all the rest. Um, the wor worst case scenario, <laughs> staff has, has accommodated the parking things. I know this was a concern of the neighbors. I, I have a question concerning the event space. Now, let's say a, a, a person who wants to use event space wants to bring in a live, a small band or a DJ. Are you going to allow them to be outside on the patio? No. If there was any type of music, it would be inside the space, you know, a DJ or something of that the sort. Mu music is not allowed outside. It, well, if it is, it's got to be subject to the noise ordinance. That's in every, everything from the, the sound speaker on a drive through to to music outside, you can't okay. hear it at whatever the, right, the music ordinance. Hey, Paul, Jeff has a question. I'd like to go after him. Yes, uh, Commissioner Berman. Thank you, thank you, Paul and, and Bob. The um, it's kind of categories under bars, but I just want to clarify because I think maybe there might be a misinterpretation. We're really not talking about Schaefer's opening a bar that's open, you know, five, six, seven nights a week. We're talking about a special event venue. Am I correct? And yeah, it's not the Uber being reincarnated. Uh, correct. And and then my second point goes to behavioral issues, which, you know, presumably you guys aren't law enforcement. So if it got, things got out of hand, Skokie police would have to respond. But um, will there be a Schaefer's employee on site 
for um, these events at, uh, um, such that, that if you're noticing some poor behavior, it could be corrected in some ways um, when you're having an event? Yes, sir. Definitively. Oh. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Quinn? Yes, um, I appreciate the, uh, the setback from the alley for the uh, patio terrace. Um, and my question on music was answered. Um, could you clarify what type of screening might be on that alley side of that patio, if any, to mitigate noise? Currently, right now, it's being shown as a board on board privacy fence, six foot tall. And then landscaping planting in front of that. Yes. Yeah. Your main sound mitigation, high wall or high fence. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? No questions. Okay. Um, I'm open for motions on all of the five cases. We'll take them individually. There was one that Steve wanted them some yeah, so we'll get to that. additional right. privileges on the part of so, staff, was there not? Right. Let's take them one at a time. Case 2021-01P, the alley vacation. Do we have a motion? Yes. I'll second it. Commissioner Mitchell, Commissioner Berman, thank you. Okay. Cool. Any further questions on this case? No. Got a call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner Lacani? No. Nope. Lacani? Aye. There Thank we go. you. Commissioner Franklin? Looks. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Pierce Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Commissioner Mate? Your vote, Commissioner Mate? He's unmuted. Aye. Oh, thank you. Oh, he's frozen. And I'll vote aye. Aye. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> On the uh, case 2021-02P, this is the subdivision case. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Who is that? Commissioner Sloven, thank you. Yes. Call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner O'Connor? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Per Sloven? Aye. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Aye. And I'll vote aye. In case 2021-03P, this is the site plan approval. The staff is requesting a setback relief provision for the back, for the uh, spaces along the garage and alley. Do I have a motion to approve? Aye. Commissioner yes. Richard, do we have a second? Second. Who is that? Commissioner Franklin. Commissioner Franklin, thank you. Move to do, do, do. Okay. Call for the vote. And this is uh, with, with the uh, setback relief. Is that correct, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, uh, call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner Lacani? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Pierce Sloven? Aye. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Aye. And I'll vote aye. In the special use case 2021-04P, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Commissioner, who is that, Robinson? Robinson, yep. Robinson. Thank you. And do we have a second? Aye. Mate. Commissioner Mate, thank you. Call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner Lacani? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Pierce Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Commissioner Mate? Aye. Thank you. And I'll vote aye. 
Case 2021-05P. This is a special use permit for the outdoor dining. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve? So, so moved. Commissioner Pierce-Logan, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Commissioner Latani? Franklin. Sec Franklin, oh, yeah. thank you. Call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quinn? Aye. Commissioner Lacani? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Pierce Loven? Aye. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Commissioner Mate? Aye. Thank you. And I'll vote aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> now, all these, all five of these cases, uh, still have to go before the board of trustees for a final vote. The plan commission is merely a, an advisory board to the to the board. So, if you'll give us your name and phone number, or excuse me, your name and address, we will notify you by mail when the meeting will go before the board. Okay. okay uh, before you leave, make sure you get copies of reports. Good. Thank you. And. You're welcome to leave unless you want to st unless you want to stay for the Duncan uh, case. Is that the drive-through case? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might stay. Um, I just want to thank Steve and his staff and, and Mr. Chair and your and your commissioners uh, and Village Council and everybody else that was involved in this. We very much appreciate it. We're we're a happy Skokie business and we'd like to stay that way well, and be and thank be you. Good tax revenue good generators and all the rest. <laughs> well, thank you. Good luck to you. And I, I, I'm I'm anticipating that you'll be good neighbors. And be good, good neighbors. We've tried all along. We'll okay, continue. very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving along. We have case 2021-06 and related case 2021-07P. Uh, 06 is a special use permit for a outdoor dining and 07 is a special use for a limited, a limited service restaurant with a drive-thru. Uh, is our petitioner present? We are here. Yes. Who's the petitioner, please? Uh, Gina and... Yeah. And Stephen. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. So here... Hi, I'm... These two. I'm Rena Pinjuani. Uh, I'm the local Dunkin' Donuts franchisee. Um, we are, um, today we're talking about the Dunkin' Donuts at Dempster and Crawford in Skokie. We've, uh, been the franchisees there for the last, uh, just, 10 or 15 just, years. Just record, uh, we are tenants of that property. Okay, excuse me for just, are, just a moment. I'm sorry. Uh, can I have both of you, I'm going to swear both of you in for testimony. Okay, of course, so you, sorry about that. I guess raise your right hand as, as you see fit. Do you affirm that the testimony you give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but truth, so help you both? Thank you. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Counselor uh, Kabilski, is the notice in order? Yes, notice is proper and correct. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please finish your presentation or continue. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll just uh, give sorry. a few more comments. Um, as I mentioned, we're the local Duncan franchisee. Today we're talking about the location at uh, Dempster and Crawford in Skokie. We are presenting uh, the scrape and rebuild of that location. It's a 60- um, or 70-year-old building, and we are uh, proposing a, a complete, complete demo and rebuild of that location uh, so that we can um, have the new Duncan prototype, the new image, uh, we also will be making our drive-through a lot more efficient and uh, in order to optimize optimize the site layout. And I also have my architect here with me, uh, the principal architect of Colebrook, uh, Steve Colbert. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, so are you going to make the presentation for the, uh, for, for the two cases? Okay. Yeah, to, 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 to build upon what uh, Rena just said, you know, we are going to scrape the existing building and start new with a, you know, a new footprint, a new building for the, that reflects the Duncan corporate next gen model. Uh, the big thing that we're doing is pushing the new building further back to make the parking a little more efficient in front of our building. 
And also we went out of our way to construct the drive through queue to be more accommodating to traffic uh, and move a lot smoother for, for what needs to happen. Uh, we've worked really hard with staff uh, on, on getting the layout just right because it is sandwiched between uh, the, the, the Zad restaurant and uh, the Burger King to the east. So, you know, cars are coming all different directions. So we went back and forth quite a bit to make sure we tweak this thing every which way we possibly could. Curb cuts onto Dempster are gonna remain as is. So we're not touching those. Just within the footprint on, of the area of our building, uh, we were able to uh, really craft uh, everything we could to meet just about every requirement the city gave us and have a project that we feel very good about. And the you know, square footage of the building's a little, little bit bigger than what it was before. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, same, you know, pretty much, you know, almost the same, same shape, just, just a little bit bigger. And again, we, we feel we've accommodated uh, everything that we needed to do operationally and uh, worked hard with staff to uh, take in all the comments that the city gave us. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Does that conclude your presentation? If so, I'll move on to the staff report. Yes, I, I believe so. The staff report is pretty thorough and uh, it, pretty, you know, it does, not, does describe everything that we've done. Okay. Very good, thank you. Um, Carrie, who's gonna present the staff Steve. report? Steve? Yes. Okay. Steve? Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit cases six and seven into the record as presented. Granted. And again, I'm just gonna summarize. Um, we did work a lot <laughs> um, with the petitioner on getting the site plan um, work to where it was. For the newer commissioner, just some background on this whole strip of buildings. They were at one time all in one ownership and there was a street going through here that which went away, Lawndale, which is actually <laughs> right where Carrie's uh, arrow is going right now. Um, it is not the best traffic flow and there's all kinds of parking easements all over it. And I think that this plan gets us one step closer to um, really improving this whole complex of buildings by getting all their parking all in one space in the front. Um, we're increasing the landscaping in the front. We're putting all the required parking spaces on their actual site um, so that we, we're not gonna be harming the neighbors in any way. Uh, <clears throat> we're protecting the cars that are backing out from Zod's. They don't end up T-boning the cars that are waiting in the, <laughs> in the, in the traffic queue on the, on the west side. Um, so really it's, it's a very vast improvement over what is there now. So we get a, a brand new building, a modern building, um, a building that is probably outlived, getting close to outliving its useful life with a, with a brand new building. We're increasing the queuing um, on the, on the drive-through. Uh, there are just a few very minor things that have to be corrected regarding some of the, the bump outs on the south side. Um, they, they didn't get lengthened when we adjusted uh, the driveway, uh, <clears throat> putting some landscape overhang on the two spaces that are the employee parking on the east side. Um, so to get a little more space for stormwater to get into the ground. And we just need a, a measurement on there just to verify. Steve, is, is that a seven foot sidewalk on the south side of the building? It, yes, it is. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. So we just need that measurement added to the plan. So it's the seven feet with the two foot overhang, so a five foot clear walk. And that's really it. <laughs> we got space for three tables outside, bike parking is getting added. Um, so you have to make sure the bike parking isn't in the two foot overhang also. But. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's basically it, and then just update the plans. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this. Okay, very good. Any questions of uh, the staff from the commissioners? I'm curious, did we have any citizen comments? I know we're up against a neighborhood on the back side. Actually, I only had one call from a neighbor across Dempster Street. And he was curious what was going on. I had no other comments that I received. I don't know if anything else came in, but man, I only had gotten the man, one telephone man call. And in the case that uh, no other comments have, have uh, been received. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the, of the staff or commissioners? I just have one, Steve, is um, maybe two. In terms of uh, trash receptacles, I think they're required at the end of the drive through and at the front door. Right, so the, the standard the conditions are in there um, regarding receptacles. I think that one is, <laughs> the, print, the one I printed out was only my summary, so I don't have the full. Uh, Carrie, because I thought I saw, I didn't see it in, in, in where trash was dealt with in a couple of places. I didn't see the requirement for the drive-through on 
both, I don't think. And then I didn't see anything yeah, relative to requirements. Commissioner, about the. Oh, okay. Okay. And what about with the outdoor dining? It should be in case seven also, yeah. Waste receptacles shall be placed in the property to use. Yeah, there we go. One okay. at the restaurant and sets of one at the outdoor dining area. In the four hour requirements for anything. Yes. It's clearing debris. I don't know if it necessarily says anything to garbage cans, but um, okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Not seeing any. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and Steve, uh, any comments from you as, as far as the uh, staff report? Anything in the staff report that you have a question on? Well, us, no. Staff, you know, again, as the other Steve said, we, we really worked uh, extensively back and forth with, with each other. So there's nothing on the staff report that it, that is a surprise to us by any stretch of the imagination. We, 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 we went through this pretty thoroughly. And you, I think your name is uh, Rena. Is that is that right? Yeah. I can't see it from here. Okay. Do you have any comments uh, as on the staff report? I um, no. I think everything is reasonable and and unlike Steve said, we I think we've done a lot and and, and we look forward to completing the project. Oh, well, we're looking forward too. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, just, I I frequently one additional place. thing just to the petitioners we um, because we're running at the budget um, with the village board, we'd like these corrections made by early next week. And we might be able to get you on the next board meet oh, if you can good. get that straightened okay. out because these are pretty minor yeah i trust okay. the architect steve could uh, get that done fairly quickly okay absolutely very and, 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 and i forgot to add that we're going to play a lot of loud music out of the menu board no. oh, there you go <laughs> same, same sound restrictions <laughs> on the menu board <laughs> yeah we, we, we were listening to, we were listening before <laughs> all right thank yeah, you yeah no these are very minor very minor things we, we can get something to you uh, you know the next day or so to make sure that it's uh you know on the next uh, agenda okay all right moving along uh without further ado then um i'm open for a motion on case 2021-06p which is a special use permit for the drive-through, is that correct? And, and the site plan. Do I have a motion? Yes. George? Yep. Do I have a George. second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner yes. Matei. Yep. Call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner Lacani? Aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Pierce Lovin? Aye. Commissioner Berman? Aye. Commissioner Matei? Aye. And I'll vote aye. Thank you. And, uh, one more, one more. Don't thank us yet. We have one more to go. <laughs> uh, case 2021-07P. This is the special use permit for the outdoor dining. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved to approve. Yeah. Is that correct? OK. Yeah. Second. second. Did I hear a second? Back in from Pierce Slobit. Thank you. Call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell. Aye. Commissioner Quain. I look forward to the new Dunkin' Donuts. I vote aye. Okay. Commissioner Lacani. <laughs> Commissioner Lacani. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Robinson. Aye. Commissioner Franklin. Aye. Commissioner Pierce Slobin. Aye. Commissioner Berman. Aye. Commissioner Matei. Aye. And I'll vote aye. And I, I just thought of a question before we leave. Uh, how long will this project take and when are you going to start? Or when, when would you start? Well, it, we, we are looking at submitting, our, our, we are moving ahead with our construction documents, you know, in anticipation of a positive uh, vote here. Uh, we're going to submit the permit the second we, we're possibly able to and, you know, start construction right away we're looking at early fall for construct for completion and we got a gcm board that's going to be aggressive with his work and we we have a very aggressive schedule once okay. we're approved we want to get right we want to get right to right to work very good thank you um thank you for coming tonight um any other ish, uh, items before the board and uh, want to wish the interns uh a welcome and uh, thank you for your help 
in the, in the five cases that you worked on with Steve and anything else. Um, hope you found, find this experience educating. Um, without further ado, uh, no questions. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And hopefully you. one of these days we'll meet all in person at, at, at Village Hall here. I mean, we're, after we all get our shots. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night. I swear we have to get we have to give Jeff a gold plate of garbage can. He has about